Can AI find out that you're homosexual just by looking at your face? In 2017, an AI gaydar was developed by a Stanford professor claiming that machine learning can detect human sexuality. Such sensational research always garnered lots of press and buzz, but it turned out that this AI gaydar research and the same conclusion could not be replicated. So, if you're still in a closet and you want to apply for a job at a company where they adopted such AI system to sniff out candidates who are homosexual, you should be fine, right? First of all, this is just how discrimination or bias works. Even though the AI gaydar doesn't really work, there are companies or even countries who are interested in implementing such systems. For example, Malaysia, because apparently there are no gay people in Malaysia. Huh? To understand why using AI interview software to interview candidates is a problem, first we must understand how bias in AI works. We're beginning to realize how much bias can creep into artificial intelligence applications and bias can occur in the data that is collected or it can occur during the algorithm being developed. And deep neural networks are often so complex that it is impossible to detect exactly where the bias comes from and that is the black box problem. And why is there bias in AI and why is it such a big problem? Turns out, we humans are the bottleneck because the datasets being used in training are mostly still curated and collected by humans. And this is also why some AI works really well with one dataset, but when you change the dataset, the AI doesn't perform as well anymore. So starting from how the problems are framed, how the data is collected, where the data comes from, to preparing the data, there are ample opportunities for human biases to creep in. To help you understand, let me give you a personal example. My current weight is 57 kilos or 125 pounds and my current height is 161 centimeters or 5 feet 3. Pretty normal, right? Yeah, I thought so too, but my scale thinks I'm fat. In fact, my scale thought I was fat before the pandemic when I was only 55 kilos. Why is that? Well, this scale was actually made in China like everything else, and in Asia people have a different beauty standard, so my own grandmother living in Taiwan would actually agree with the scale. I'm fat in Asia. Since this scale was made in China, the data samples used by the scale as benchmarks were probably from China too, where every woman is skinnier than me. And this is an example of selection bias. For this product to work well in Germany, the manufacturers should have included the weight data from Germany too, but they only had the data from China. Now imagine if we just use this Chinese view and the Chinese data to train deep neural networks that are supposed to work everywhere, of course the end results and the algorithms would be biased. So just to recap, I'm not fat but this Chinese scale calls me fat in Germany. How dare you! We all have biases. It's the way our brains cope with the huge amount of information influx. If we have to make a decision about every little thing, we will be paralyzed and unable to continue with our day. Therefore, we have learned to make snap judgments that we are not even aware of to reduce the cognitive load so we can quickly go about with our day. Everyone is biased. So back to the AI interviews, many companies providing such AI interview solutions claim that their solutions can eliminate human bias in the process. Now you know that this statement is questionable because the human bias is already built in. From the scale example, you know how easy it is for selection bias to exist when your data sample doesn't represent the whole group fairly. As long as the AI systems are still built by humans, there will be biases in the systems. The other concerning claim is that some of these companies say these AI interviewers can detect micro expressions and emotions of the people being interviewed, as well as using signals such as how these candidates speak and behave to make assumptions about the candidate's future job performance. To test with this claim, a group of Bavarian broadcasting journalists tested the solution provided by a Munich-based startup called Rhetorial. The journalists found out that 
Just by having a virtual bookshelf as your background, the final score of the interviewee is greatly improved. In the same test, it is shown that if the female candidate wears glasses, she receives a lower score. But if she wears a headscarf, her score is much higher. They didn't even test with the facial expressions yet. It is already unsettling to know that what you wear can have an impact on your score. This doesn't mean you have to wear a headscarf to make your AI happy in the next AI interview though because these changes have a different effect on different people. Furthermore, the problem is that when job candidates' applications are rejected, even though they could be perfectly qualified, no one or no human can tell them why they're rejected or tell the candidates how they can improve next time. Rhetorio is not the only company being questioned. HireVue, a company based in the US, claims that they already have over 700 customers, even though the results that HireVue provides are being questioned by a lot of AI experts. The same scenario could happen in the AI loan approval process. How do we know our applications are rejected because of the bias systems? We will never know because these decisions are made by an AI. As more and more companies looking to deploy AI systems across operations, we have to be aware of these risks and work to reduce them. I have to know I'm not fat.